He run right out 11, 7 of Kraft, Kraft 11. Do it over, coming in. How about you go? The hot, humid Florida air hung heavy around the unforgiving sandstone bricks of the fortification, mingling with the scent of sweat and gunpowder. Men, women, and children bustled about their daily tasks, each with their own purpose yet with a communal spirit as if their hearts beat as one. Work makes the, dream work. the sound of chatter and laughter mixed with the occasional yell or order from a superior kept even the most vivid daydream from wandering too far from their capricious existence. In the center of the stronghold, a group of women sat together, weaving baskets and chatting amongst themselves. The youngest children played nearby, giggling as they ran around with their makeshift toys. In the distance, a group of men could be seen tending to the crops, while others patrolled the perimeter of the fort, their eyes and ears sharp for any impending threat. The smell of smoke wafted through the air, signaling the start of dinner preparations. A group of men and women worked together, roasting a fresh catch of bream over an open flame and boiling lima beans, corn, onions, and tomatoes in a large pot for a hearty succotash. Oh, what you cooking? The tantalizing scent drew people from all corners of the garrison, eager for their share of the meal. As the sun began to set, the fort settled into a peaceful routine. Some gathered around the fire, telling stories and singing songs while others retreated to their huts for some much-needed rest. Yet, even in these quieter moments, the ever-present awareness of the potential for conflict lingered in the air. This was life at Negro Fort, a community that had built itself up from nothing, defying the odds and carving out a place of safety and belonging in a world that often saw them as expendable. Every day brought new challenges, but also new opportunities for growth and camaraderie. And even in the face of danger, the people of Negro Fort remained unbroken, determined to live their lives on their own terms. We We're not gonna let Yoda, my trap history family. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most epic trap houses in black history, Negro Fort. This place was the ultimate trap house back in the day, a true symbol of black excellence and ingenuity. So let's get into it and learn about this little known refuge that predated the Underground Railroad by decades. Located in what is now known as Florida. Florida? Watch your mouth. A thousand kids here for the sole purpose of party. It was built in 1814 by the British as a strategic defense against the United States. The fort was eventually abandoned by the British, and it was taken over by runaway slaves, Seminole Indians, and other black people seeking refuge from slavery. The fort was known for being heavily fortified and armed, with over 30 cannons and over 1,000 residents at its peak. It was even nicknamed the African Gibraltar by the Spanish due to its impressive defense capabilities. Sweet. The fort was built on a bluff overlooking the Apalachicola River in Spanish Florida. I have the high ground. A mix of black Seminoles and free blacks from the United States. Okay. They were led by an experienced black soldier named Garcon. But the most amazing thing about Negro Fort was that it was a place where black people were truly free. There were no slave masters or overseers, and everyone worked together for the common good. The community within the fort was largely self-sufficient, with gardens and livestock providing food and resources. They also had a blacksmith, a carpenter, and a shoemaker among their ranks. The fort was a center of trade and commerce, with boats coming up the river to trade with the inhabitants. They traded in goods such as furs, skins, and tobacco. We need everything we need right the community within the fort also had a vibrant cultural life. They sang and danced, held religious services, and exchanged stories in folklore. The community within the fort was also deeply connected to the natural world around them. They used herbs and plants to heal sicknesses and ailments, and held a deep respect for the land and the environment. Living off the land. The inhabitants of Negro Fort were not just runaway slaves, but also free black people, indigenous people, and other marginalized groups who were seeking refuge from oppression. 
They formed a community and established a system of governance, trade, and defense. You got the juice now. The inhabitants of the fort were skilled marksmen and had access to a cache of weapons and ammunition. They used this to fend off attacks from American forces and to provide protection for black slaves seeking refuge. The fort was surrounded by a moat to further protect against attacks. It was a true example of black excellence and self-determination. Scary, huh? Don't be scared.